Last Saturday I attended Griffin Hammond's documentary filmmaking in 4K workshop. So I actually got to meet with him and asked him a few questions about editing a documentary. And one portion of his workshop, he actually shows you how to set up an interview. I thought it would benefit those who want to start their own documentary and how to set up an interview and light it and all the audio. Without further ado, let's watch the video. Just keep your eyes on her face. And let's say we wanted to frame this up with like a rule of thirds appropriateness, you know, maybe we would shoot it like around here or here or something, mm -hmm. you know, have him look, we want more look room than behind his head. Right. It actually looks pretty good. Um, but watch what happens. Sorry, what's everyone's name? You're Luigi. Luigi? Raquel. Raquel? James. James. Louis, Raquel. James. Okay. Really <laughs> <laughs> yeah. All very different ethnicities. Uh, Raquel, Luigi, you keep your eyes on Raquel. Raquel, I want you to just slowly move that direction. And just watch Luigi's eyes. Yeah, very nice. <laughs> so stop right there. So like, when you're setting up an interview, you have a lot of control over the direction that the person's looking. And there is a standard of, it's, it's kind of the visual grammar of documentary. The person being interviewed is usually looking off camera. And it's, it's our way of signaling to the audience that this is a quote. This is a person being quoted on camera. They're not the narrator. Luigi, look into the camera. Now you're the narrator. Now I'm the author of the story. There are exceptions to this, of course. Anyone familiar with the movie Fog of War? Errol yeah, Errol Morris's film. He invented this thing called the Interatron, or maybe his DP did. Um, the idea is kind of like a teleprompter. People are looking into the camera lens, but they're seeing Errol Morris's face. And then Errol Morris is seeing their face in a similar like periscope setup. So he could do an interview where the people are actually looking into the camera. Anyone ever tried to have talent look into the camera? It usually doesn't go very well. I, I mean, I even find for myself, looking into a camera lens is very difficult to do and talk. And if you ask someone who's, you know, if you're just interviewing people at a company and you're saying, all right, let's do this corporate video, president of the company, look into the lens, they're just gonna freeze up and it's gonna go terribly. So almost always doing it as an interview where they're looking off camera is good. But, Luigi, if you look over there again, this is way too much like, it looks weird to have him look that far over. So come like halfway back. I'm often tempted to record interviews like this, but even that is still a pretty stark angle. So come all the way to the camera. I usually go like, yeah, exactly where you're standing. Like he's still clearly looking off camera, but he's close, you know, we still see his face because he's looking forward. So that's usually the setup I like. Um, because we're at such a high ISO, we could pop some lighting on him. So less bright. And I'm also going to change the color temperature to be more like what's happening in this room. I'm going to go very yellow. And bring down the ISO here. It could be at 320 or something. That actually looks pretty good. So we're wide open on the lens. We're getting very, you know, if that's what we want, if we want everyone to be blurry, uh, great. We could also close down the lens and we can compensate with some ISO or, or turn on more lights. And now we're getting a little bit more of the background. So it's really just up to us, uh, what aesthetically do we want to do? Do we want everyone out of focus or do we want to see everyone? And just because I normally shoot very wide open, let's do that. But the background's pretty boring now. So maybe I'll take this other light, see what I can do here. Maybe I can light all you up. Ooh, <laughs> that's actually more dramatic than I thought it would be. Uh, I could go with this very like blue color that's different. Uh, let's see what it looks like if I go more yellow. That's probably more appropriate. Also, let's see if we get any different effect by going higher. Uh, not really noticeable. Difference. I am not a master lighter, and I'm not going to spend a lot of time on this, but like, you know, put light on things. It, everything looks better with light. <laughs> but I also don't like to go crazy. Like, when I can use natural light, I like to. I'm a filmmaker that likes to not draw attention to the craft of filmmaking. I don't want you to be thinking about the editing too much or thinking about the process going into it. So when it's like really overproduced, like I could do, 
you know, where's my loom cube? I don't know how much effect this will have. Yeah, it's like I could, I could try to, well, screw it up. This light's kind of funny. You have to push it 10 times to get to the brightest, and then we push it one more, it goes this. Okay, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. There we go. You know, I could do some backlighting too, which is great for separating him from the background, although we don't need it that much because it's a black background, so he's already pretty separated. But you know, if I wanted to do a full three-point lighting setup, I could have my my fill light, my my key light, and my backlight. But I just often think it looks so produced. And you know, for the kind of work I'm doing, very like documentary, we were really there, we really talked to them. This look might be too much for me. So I often don't go crazy. I usually just bring one light just so we can see it. And you know, it looks so much better. You know, we're not dealing with high ISO and all that noise. So I don't know, I'm pretty happy with this video. Personally, I'm a shooter that likes to shoot a lot closer, um, but I say let's go with this. It looks good in the 25 millimeter. The challenge will be that we won't be able to get as close with the microphone. So let's see how close we can get before you're in the shot. Uh, actually, yeah. pretty go. Yeah. That's basically, how far you want to bring this sort of mic? Yeah, I mean, that's often, right now we're like two and a half feet or something. I think usually, like, between one and a half and like three feet is where I like the shotgun microphone to be. I think that'll sound pretty good. The other thing we can do is let's say you were in the shot. Oh, actually, this was kind of funny is we can't see it against this black, so. And I have shot interviews where I've just decided I'm going to put the microphone. Oh, sorry. Can we even see it against the black? Where, where are we? <laughs> yeah, it's funny how it kind of disappears in the shot. But I've done shots where I've put a microphone blatantly in the shot, like this. Well, it's hard to see. Uh, and then just, if we shoot the whole interview and you don't move, and then I take this down, and we have all this blank space that nothing was happening over here anyway, I can just shoot a shot with no microphone, and now I have something I can like Photoshop on. I can just grab that corner, cut it out, place it on the top of my video. I've done that where I was interviewing someone like a chicken coop, and it made sense to have like a wide shot where there's chickens running around everywhere, and we just had a microphone right in the shot above him so we could get good audio. Uh, but this should work well. The other thing is, let's say you hold it here, and it's blatantly in the shot, the other thing I'll, I could do sometimes is if we just raise the shot, you could somehow, sometimes just from being higher up, we can, you know, there's less of the microphone there now. Like, clearly it's not enough, but the higher up I go, the less, I, I can get a little bit closer from underneath. And I suppose the opposite would be true. If you were coming in from above, the lower I went, the, the less likely I'd see it. And actually, being up here does not the worst thing. Well, I don't know. It looks so good before. Where was it before? Generally, I want to be eye level with the person. You know, if I go really high above you, actually, that's kind of a cool look, but it has kind of a diminishing effect. You always make the person look smaller when you shoot them from above, which might be what you want. Uh, it's also kind of heroic to shoot people from the bottom. Uh, you actually do look more like, you look cooler that way. <laughs> Uh, so, I mean, I have some control over that, but generally, if I'm not trying to, like, introduce a lot of uh, commentary on you, I probably just want to shoot you from where your eyes are. Also, as an interviewer, you're taller than him, but not enough that it's making a difference too much. But, like, what would happen if you just ducked down a little tiny bit? And now look at her. Like, I can kind of control his eye line, too. So, I'm kind of tall. So, if I'm interviewing a really short person, a lot of times I'll kind of interview them like this, because I don't want them looking up in the shot. All right, so everything's framed nicely. We're focused. This thing is on. So let's just do like an audio check. Um, just count to 10 or something. Hello? Let's see, what are we getting here? Keep talking. Hey, what's up? I'm Louis J. Studio. I'm a videographer. I have a YouTube channel. A little channel. quiet, so I'm going to turn it up. And yeah. Promotion. <laughs> yeah, that's great. Use every opportunity you can. All right, so hit the record button on there. And I don't think we're seeing the mic, so that's good. And you hit the record button on here, which is up right there. Hello? All right. Okay. Oh, I forgot this whole time we've been looking. That's so funny. This whole time we were looking at the um, photo mode. So in video mode, 
it will be a little bit tight because it's 16 by nine, not four by three, but actually it still looks cool. All right, so now we're rolling. So I'll say aloud to myself, rolling video, because we are, it's counting up, rolling audio, because we are, all right. And uh, Raquel, do you have any questions for him? I want you to ask him about his YouTube channel. Ask me the most random question I'll answer right now. Tell me about your most embarrassing moment. <laughs> <laughs> One time I had a shotgun, uh, I was shooting a, a, you know, like a blank disc, and then a random pig flew, and I blew it up, and money fell out. And what did you spend that money on? In and out. <laughs> <laughs> what are the long-term effects of eating in and out with all that money you got? Oh, nothing. You actually gain more life. You live longer. It's very true. Scientifically proven by uh, Neil, Neil Tyson. Yeah. Cool. I'm gonna stop rolling. Thank you. I'm super random. <laughs> <laughs> and then stop rolling the audio. And one thing I want to point out about mic placement, you were doing, you were pointing it exactly where it should be. You have kind of an option with shotgun mics of, if you point at the mouth, that's good, but sound actually comes from here and here. So oftentimes you're kind of pointing at the neck to kind of get the best of both. You're gonna get a little bit of bassier sounds out of someone's chest and the, the higher treble sounds out of their mouth. So you can kind of choose, but I often just think like, ah, just point it here. Uh, but also a shotgun mic, needs to be pointed at the subject. So sometimes I, I'm, I have producers recording with me and they'll be kind of doing like this or something. It's like, that's, it'll work. That's, you're still gonna get there, but it's just not gonna sound as good. So just make sure it's always pointed right at him and you were doing a great job. So cool, any questions about that setup? So that, that's the H5? Or this is the H5 recorder, yeah. And then this is just the shotgun mic and it's connected to XLR? Yep, just an XLR cable. Now the other thing we could have done is we could have used the. Uh, in fact, let's let's just see the difference real quick. Do you? Uh, oh yeah, isn't that that top thing? Like, oh, I did this wrong. Yeah, unplug it from. Do you have any tricks when you're recording to make it easier to sync the audio? So that's what's funny is um, I'll show you how I sync audio in Final Cut. It's so easy. You just select the audio and select the video and right click and say synchronize, and it looks at the waveforms of each. Now you have to have audio on both. So if somehow you're recording without audio, that'll be a problem. Uh, here, hold this again. Yeah, plug this into one. And let's see, we can turn off audio level control. And we can actually see the levels. So point that at him again. We don't see anything anymore. Oh, yeah. Why are we not seeing? Batteries. <laughs> <coughs> I have mentioned something about phantom power. Is that it obviously gives phantom? It's weird that I'm getting it in photo mode, not in video mode. That's funny. It didn't just turn off when I plugged in the XLR adapter, right? I think no, it was already. It dropped when you turned it to uh, yeah. video. Yeah. And I thought it was because we were recording. I don't know why it's not doing it right now. Let's see. What did you change that to HD? Oh, I, yep, that's, I bet that's what it was. We were shooting in 4K. We're exporting to a TV that can't do 4K. So I just turned on down convert in the settings where it's now sending out an eight, a 1080 signal even though it's shooting 4K. That's what the problem was. So let's get a mic test on this system. If you just want to count to 10 for me. One, two, three, four, okay. five, Getting nothing. Six, seven, eight, oh wait, are we in input two? We are, that's fine. One, two, three, four. There we are. Okay. Now we're good. Oh yeah, you guys got to see it the whole time. So what happened was this thing has two settings that are kind of nice. It has a, we're actually plugged into input two. It has a setting for, do you want input one to go to both channels? Because maybe you want to just publish this thing right away. So it's stereo. Uh, I had to turn that off. So now we're on, now I can actually get it into input two. 
Once I turned that on, we still weren't getting any audio. That's because input two didn't have its phantom power on because this is a microphone that needs phantom power. So now we're getting it. And it seems like we're getting good levels. So let's record one more time. And are we rolling? Yeah. And now we don't have to say I'm rolling audio because we know what we are. So ask him one more question. Blind date horror stories. <laughs> <laughs> she was a man. <laughs> all right, there we got it. <laughs> okay. Cool. I think that's all we need. Thank you so much for your help. So, any questions about? Yeah, good team. Any questions about what just transpired? So that's the end of the video. Thank you guys for watching. If you want to subscribe, you can do that right here, and also watch some of my other videos right here. See you later.